the accuracy of the scheme becomes increases pretty fast as I decrease delta x. So if I just the what I did, I decrease the delta x from 0.1 to 0.01, right? How much do you think I have decreased the error in the finite difference approximation? A factor of a factor of ten, a hundred, right? Because delta x is decreased by a factor of ten, so delta x is decreased by a factor of a hundred. That's a very nice property to have in one D, but almost a necessary property to have if you go to two D and three D. I mean, especially three D, because think of the computation cost. The, your computation cost is at least proportional to the number of grid points, right? <laughs> and in 3D, your delta x is going to be like the cubic root of your grid points. So if, for example, we have a scheme whose approximation error is just o order delta x, which is actually sufficient for you to get a pretty good solution in 1D, right? I mean, in one D, you can nail delta x to small, small, small. I mean, the computer still runs. Uh, the reason a thousand didn't run is not because a thousand is too much. It's because OD forty five actually doesn't quite work for for this problem. OD forty five uses explicit time integration, and uh, explicit time integration is actually very bad for heat equation. I'm going to uh, tell a little bit later. So. So in one D you can you can do a lot of grid points no problem in three D if you want your delta x to be ten times smaller you need a thousand times grid points and if you spend a thousand times more grid point your error only goes down by a factor of ten it's pretty horrible okay uh, so so this kind of scheme we call second order scheme so a second order scheme this is what is uh, means a second a second order scheme. Okay, uh, second order scheme means the leading term in the approximation error is proportional to delta x to the second to uh, squared. Uh, similarly, if you have a first order scheme, that should uh, shouldn't uh, mean good thing. I mean, first order is actually bad. It, it means it's only proportional to delta x. A third order scheme is even better. It's proportional to delta x cubed. So if you decrease delta x by a factor of 10, your error goes down by, by a factor of 1,000, right? OK, so these are the order of the scheme. So the order of the scheme can be analyzed mathematically from the approximation error. It can also be seen computationally. So. So how do you convince yourself you get a third order scheme or a second order scheme that is implemented correctly, right? The second part is important because uh, you may have a third order scheme, you may have a, a little bug in the code, you may go back to first order, right? It's very very common if you if you if especially if you have a complicated scheme, it's nominally I order fourth order, and you make a small mistake in your implementation. Your code still works, but it's only first order accurate. That's a very common thing that can happen. So to convince yourself, okay, you should draw a diagram. The diagram can the x-axis can be either delta x or the number of grid points. Let's just use delta x. And then use a known function. Just to say, okay, so let's just to say u equal to whatever function you construct uh, something crazy, exponential of x minus sine of x or whatever, right, plus x squared, let's say. Okay, you plot the difference because in this case you know what is the derivative of, what is the second order derivative minus your finite difference approximation, right? This is a technique you can use to check your own code. So look at the norm of this. Uh, does that everybody know what a norm means for a vector? It just means, for example, the, the maximum norm is just to look at the maximum absolute value of all the terms, right? 
the L1 norm means you take the absolute value of every term and add them together, right? So it's kind of an indication of what is the overall magnitude of this vector. So, so you plot the error against your delta x, not in the linear plot, but in the, the double logarithmic plot, right? You plot in a double logarithmic plot, so each line corresponds to a factor of 10. Right, so you're gonna get a get a line of like, you, I mean, a logarithmic a logarithmic uh, plot looks like that, right? So you have uh, lines that are uh, factor of two, three, etc. They they are not uh, uh, proportion. I mean, they, they are not equally spaced. Okay, so if you get a first order scheme, how do you expect the error to go down as delta x decreases? Straight line. I mean. Straight line is the case for every scheme, right? So for a second order scheme, you also expect it to be a straight line in the log log plot. In the log log plot, a straight line just means a polynomial relationship. It doesn't mean linearity or anything. If you have a first order scheme, your line should be like that, right? Oh, by the way, you don't expect the line to be straight or anything for big delta x, because for big delta x, all the terms you ignored in the Taylor series may come into play. You may only expect the line to be straight when your delta x is small enough. I mean, how small is small enough? It depends on a lot of things. But like you should see, when delta x is small enough, it, it goes down straight. So this is going to be a first order scheme. Your slope of the line is equal to 1. That means a first order scheme. So how do you expect a second order scheme to look like? Steeper, yes. It should still be a straight line, but your second order scheme it should be like that. Initially, when you have a huge delta x, your second order scheme may or may not be more accurate than the first order, who knows? But as delta x decreases, it'll cross over for sure at some point. Similar, if you have a third order scheme, you expect the line to be even steeper. Etc. Right. So this is a good way to check you actually have a uh, accurate or whatever order scheme you think you you have. So this is a way to obtain the discretization error or approximation error. How much error am I incurring in approximating a differential operator? Here there is an important distinction. I'm not talking about the difference between the true solution and your numerical solution. 